Hello and welcome back. I'm Tex, and this is episode 5 of Lunar Industries, an Orbiter 2016 video series. In the previous episode, we did a short flight from Brighton Beach to another base on the surface of the moon called Aurora. Once there, we did a crew rotation. Now we need to depart Aurora and head up to ESS, a space station in lunar orbit. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, here we are where we left off, of course, and uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to put some fuel back Our into the uh, vessel here. As usual, we'll transfer some of the main fuel over into our RCS tanks. Refueling systems so I'm not really sure how much fuel we're going to need for this because I'm going to do a slightly different flight on this one. So what we're going to do is actually, um, so let's just top RCS off RCS and full. we're going to put a decent amount here in the main tank. Uh, but yeah, what we're going to do is uh, a direct ascent to the ESS space station. So we'll just take a look. So there's 8,000 kilometers, kilograms rather, sorry, of fuel. Go a little bit more. Speed time up. And I uh, was just monitoring uh, burn time MFD. So there's 9,500 kilograms in the main tank. Burn time shows 5,244 meters per second in delta V. I'm quite sure that's more than enough to do what I want to do. But, um, you know, just since I'm not exactly sure how much fuel uh, we'll need, I'll go ahead and put that much in. Once again, I am using the expert fuel ISP setting. So it's going to take us, uh, our, our fuel rate, uh, burn rate is going to be much higher than the default setting. All right, so uh, like I said, we're going to do a direct ascent Rotation. up to the uh, ESS space station. So I think this is probably going to be a lot easier Interval to do from the moon reset. than it is uh, on the Earth, for one thing, because we need a lot less velocity to, uh, to reach orbit. So go ahead and uh, target ESS on the map MFD and take a look at where it is. Um, we went ahead and... Uh, off camera timed it so that uh, its orbital plane is uh, right over the base and uh, it is uh, approaching the base now. So all we need to pretty much do is just time the launch so that we take off when uh, ESS is near our position here at, uh, at Aurora base. So let's uh, just pull up launch MFD here. And uh, really, that wasn't much use to us. We know that uh, because we're going to do a direct ascent to the space station, we're pretty much going to wait until it's almost directly overhead, which means we're going to be launching in basically an easterly launch heading. So yeah, I think it's getting fairly close to where um, we'd like to have it. So let's go ahead and get our uh, comm nav frequency set up since we're going to be basically getting there pretty quickly. Um, that way we don't have to mess with it later. So we're going to go ahead and set the transponder frequency to 132.20. There it is. It's already picking it up. And we'll, uh, we're going to dock in uh, docking port number 5. So we'll set nav 2 to 113.65. Okay, there we go. Not close enough to pick that one up yet. Okay, so... Just monitoring map MFD. I think we're going to have to get a, uh, let it get a little closer to us. Okay, let's get our orbit MFD set up. Projection distance done. And let's target ESS. We can see that its uh, altitude is around 260 kilometers. Periapsis is 260. Apoapsis is 263. So it's uh, it's up there a ways. So we can open the docking MFD. You can see that its uh, closure velocity is actually uh, typical orbital velocity there. It's closing on us uh, just under 600 kilometers. Taking a look at our delta V. Okay, burn time is showing 65.727 kilometers in distance to reach the velocity that I input, which basically is orbital velocity, 1,640 meters per second. However, we probably don't want to wait until ESS actually gets that close to us because we have to remember it's both downrange and above us. 
so its altitude was roughly about 200 kilometers above the surface so I'm just guessing here but maybe when the distance to ESS on the docking MFD reaches 265 kilometers so that would allow us to cover the altitude and the downrange factor um, but I'm not 100% sure if that would be correct and I think that's probably going to be about as far as we should go so let's go ahead and open surface MFD turn off external O2. cooling APU is on and retro hover doors we're going to open those hover doors are okay Wheels bring the hover engines up gear I'm going to level the wings here raise the gear we're going to turn over to 90 gear degrees information APU fuel 70% Okay, so main engines are going up. So the first thing we're going to do is get some tangential velocity here. Uh, essentially just um, reaching orbital velocity here. So we are aiming straight forward. It looks like we may have mistimed it just a little bit actually. ESS has already passed over our position. Uh, but fortunately it doesn't take a whole lot of velocity to uh, reach orbit here on the moon. So. Uh, that mistake hopefully won't be um, exaggerated quite as badly as it would be on the Earth. Just take a quick look around. It's very cool. To land. Okay, so zoom out a bit more so we can still see ESS there. Alright, so orbit MFD on the left side. We're going to probably have this uh, sort of a funky orbit shape. Uh, there is ESS sort of directly above us and a little bit in front of us so it's a little bit downrange, a little bit uh, more above us than anything so most of the distance uh, is all in altitude since it's almost directly over us at the moment uh, which makes sense its uh, current distance is 260 kilometers so we're going to bring the main engines back we, uh, we now have an apoapsis of 85 kilometers so we have enough velocity that um, translation. we're pretty much in Rotation. orbit. Let's just see. A little bit of translation was moving the velocity vector that way. So let's uh, rotate up. And we're going to use a little bit of our main engines here as we're rotating. We want to try and get that velocity vector aimed right at the uh, space station. So now that we've got that tangential velocity I'm sort of um, rotating the vessel more upright and actually maybe a little bit beyond upright. We're almost pointed straight up at the moment. In fact now we are pointed straight up and we're pointed a little bit backwards and uh, just use a few bursts of the main engine here to bring that velocity vector right over top of the space station and engine cut off so that's pretty close it's a little bit of Buck Rogers but um, not too bad let's go ahead and rotate down and we'll get the front of the vessel pointed directly at the uh, space station we can use our linear RCS to adjust that velocity vector so it falls directly within that box. And because of our velocity differences right now, um, it's taking quite a bit of linear RCS to do that. Not a big deal though, we have more than enough fuel. So as that's coming over, you can see we're about 232 kilometers out from the space station. Our closure velocity is just over 400 meters per second. Uh, so it's not too bad. Rotation. Once again, because the moon has uh, much lower gravity than the Earth, uh, velocities are a lot more manageable. Uh, so really, I'd say in that regard, the moon is really a good practicing ground for orbital operations. So punching in 395 meters per second, we're looking at about 15.6 kilometers in distance using our retro engines.
to scrub that. So we're going to get within 16 kilometers of the space station before we actually fire our retro engines to break. So there is orbital sunset, uh, lunar sunset perhaps, uh, just occurring behind us there. And we're pretty much pointed straight up toward the space station. Um, and I did forget to start the interval timer once again, uh, as a, uh, I don't understand why I keep forgetting to do that. But uh, we can take a look at the elapsed time from the beginning and uh, add that into our interval timer. So we're looking at maybe a few minutes on that. I don't recall exactly what it said, but uh, anyways, it will be interesting to see just how quickly we uh, reach the space station. I think this is uh, probably going to be the fastest uh, rendezvous flight that I've ever I've ever done. Certainly is not going to take nearly as long or as many steps as it does to get to ISS uh, for most of my typical flights in orbiter. All right, so now we're once again in a coasting phase. So we just need to um, coast until we get uh, quite a bit closer to the space station. So we're going to speed time up. And once again, we're looking at around 16 kilometers out. So we're going to just go to 10x. And we're going to use our linear RCS to uh, make sure that our velocity vector is taking us directly toward the space station. Because the shape of our orbit is different from the space station, uh, you can see our velocity vector is sort of being pulled away from it. But as we get closer with these small course corrections I'm continuing to make here, um, our, the shape of our orbit is uh, going to look exactly like the space station. And uh, that will basically bring us in for a nice smooth approach here. So we're 45k out. Uh, our closure velocity is actually sort of coming down on its own. Rotation. I'm just going to rotate toward that velocity vector. Let's update our delta v. So it's at currently 303. Let's put in 304. It's 303.7. So we'll round up to 304. So now we're only looking at 9.2 kilometers in distance. So maybe about 10k out at this point. Uh, would be a good time to break maybe a little bit further because we need to we don't want to essentially run right into it We want to make sure we stop far enough out that we can uh, come in through the docking corridor as usual okay so we're 13k out there's 12 kilometers 11, 10, and we're burning. Okay, so we were actually looking at just under, I think it was 300 meters per second at delta V. So we uh, were burning in plenty of time. So we're closing down on the space station. We're with under 6 kilometers. Just going to yaw a little bit here. Try and keep that velocity vector heading right toward it. It is nighttime right now, so unfortunately we're not going to have a nice view of the space station until we get closer. And our lights will illuminate it as we come in for a docking. You can actually see some strobe lights on the space station just ahead flashing. Alright, we're 1.2 kilometers out. Switch over to the docking... Uh, HUD there. 1, you see the docking corridor just below us. Closure velocity is coming down. And engine cut off. So we're going to just translate down into that docking corridor. Still have some closure velocity, Rotation. which is fine. We need to coast into that docking corridor. It's going to take us right into docking port number five. Seven hundred. Translation. Six hundred. Yeah, looking at the orbit MFD over there, you can see our orbit shape is identical to the space station. So let's go ahead and open the nose cone while we're thinking about it. We're definitely going to have to have that open for docking. 
500. Okay, nose cone is open, power down the APU. And we'll just close in on this docking corridor, speed time up a little bit. 300. 200. We're just using a few short bursts of the retro engines to go ahead and scrub a little bit more of that speed off. And now we can rotate up. So we're facing the space station. And of course, we'll orient ourselves, rotate around the, the right side up. Oh, there's the Earth right over there in front of us. Very cool. And there is the space station coming out in the light. Very impressive. Very large. So that's very cool. Um, okay, let's kill rotation. And we need to rotate the other way around. Roll, I should say, roll the other way around. So that we're coming in right side up. Yep, that is definitely one impressive space station here. Too bad it's not daylight, but uh, yeah, it can't always be daylight. This is still, at least we have the local light sources with Orbiter that we can now see space stations illuminated uh, for nighttime dockings which is very very useful I certainly remember the days before that when you had to uh, talk in the dark and just use pure instrumentation of course we could turn the lights off for a nice little challenge if we wanted to but uh, we'll leave them on so just about oriented properly for the docking port once again that white X we want that to be right in the center of the target as it is now and we're gonna use our linear RCS to bring that uh, yellow cross also into the center of the target so yeah uh, just bear with me here as we bring it in for docking pretty standard stuff if you've seen my videos but um, it is certainly one of the fun things to do in orbiter so we're gonna hopefully bring it in for a nice smooth docking translation Rotation. Translation. Rotation. Translation. Translation seventy five. Translation. 
rotation. Translation. 20. Rotation. Translation. 15. Right, so Nine. we're just about safely docked here with a, about eight meters to the docking ports. Seven. Translation. Six. Rotation. We're just jumping back and forth between Five. rotation translation. and translation, trying to keep everything perfectly lined up. Four. Three. Two. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. One. Translation. Quick last minute adjustment there. Contact. Alright, not too bad. Alright, contact. Okay, so let's uh, get everything shut down over here so we can wrap up this episode. We are safely docked. Let's turn the APU on. Uh, we can stow the radiator, close the retro doors, turn off RCS mode, power down our MFDs. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn off our lights. We'll leave beacon on. Stop the interval timer. Um, so well, we're at 21 minutes, so I forget, maybe a few minutes added to that. So call it 25 minutes. Well, I'll turn on external cooling and turn off the APU. So yeah, uh, roughly about 25 minutes is not too bad for a direct flight up to the space station. So we're going to transfer the, some of this RCS fuel over into the main tank, and uh, we'll leave it like that uh, for this episode. We can turn the HUD off. So that'll wrap up today's episode, guys. I hope you liked it. For the next episode, I had actually recorded a flight from the space station here back to Brighton Beach, but I figured you've already seen me land on the moon twice. You probably don't want to see it yet again. So just to keep things interesting, what we're going to do is actually start out on the surface back at Brighton Beach so that we can plan our trip back to the Earth. And we'll probably also go ahead and get into a parking orbit around the moon. Uh, I know it leaves a little bit of a gap in the flight from where we are now uh, and actually being back at Brighton Beach. But once again, I just figured it would uh, be more interesting if we did things that way. So listen, uh, thank you guys once again for following the series. Uh, I hope you're all doing really well, and until the next episode, take care, and we'll see you then.